I muted it. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Great. I guess we'll just move forward now. Um, I guess that's our beginning. <laughs> okay. Hi, it's me. It's Chatty Abby. Um, I'm here with Gideon. He is my brother. He watched my reaction to um, the Golden Boy Prodigal music reaction that I did. And he really likes this song. Um, and he felt that I was completely doing it wrong. So he wanted to come on here and give his perspective on that song. So here we go. Gideon, what did you think of the song? Uh, the song totally like, you know, demonstrated my life from like when I was 12, you're like, you create two different personas that you enact um, differently around different people. And it says that from the very first line, it's like, you've got two different coins and depending on who you're with, you display the different side of the coin. And that was my life when I turned 12. Um, and so, yeah, that, that hit me really deep. Very first line, very, very powerful first line. And then you're like, yeah, you know, you, and then you took it completely different. How did you take it? I forgot. <laughs> um, I, I took it. No, I think I understood it that same way where it's, um, he's talking about the dark side of him that he wishes didn't exist. And then the, the good side that he presents to society. Okay. Yeah. But see, that's, that's where you and I go a little different. He doesn't have he has two different sides. He's got the golden boy and the person he doesn't really like, but it's not that he presents one to society. It's just that he has two different groups of society. He's got his best friends and then he's got his family or he's got his best friends and then he's got the rest of the world. And he only displays one half of himself to his best friends and the other half to the rest of society. It's not like he doesn't pers or personify one side. It's that he displays himself differently depending on who he's around. Oh, Okay. So it's not that he, he, he doesn't like one so much, but he considers himself that person unless he's around, you know, his parents, and then he acts the golden boy, unless he's around these people, then he acts this way, but he doesn't, he he's, he's both of them, but only when he's around, you know, certain people. Okay. Did you feel like there was anything else that I got wrong? Uh, I can't remember what the second verse was about. Can, is there any way we can play it during this? Um, yeah, I can play it. I don't know how good the audio will be. <clears throat> or do you have the lyrics? You could read the lyrics off even. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, let's see if they have it. You said this song touched you really deeply. Yes. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> there are two sides to every person, like the two sides of a dime. Heads or tails, it depends upon who's walking at the time. Though I hate to say it, mine is no exception. One part is the prodigal, the other part deception. Yeah. Should I keep going? Yeah. Like the prince and the pauper, like Jacob and his brother, each hide a different heart, each a shadow of the other. Me and my doppelganger both share the same blood. One I have hated, the other I have loved. See, that's where I got like he hated, he hates part of himself. It's from lyrics like that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But he doesn't, he doesn't disassociate, basically, is what I'm trying to say. I thought I kind of figured you were saying that. You know, he disassociated from the person he hated, but he knew, he knows that they're both him, but he doesn't like the side of him that he is when he's around certain people. Oh, yeah. I think, because I think for me personally, I disassociate with the parts of myself I don't like very much. Um, so I think that's why I took it that way, because that's more my experience. But I do understand also acting different around other different people and in like different environments. I think I'm pretty sure everybody can relate to that. Yeah, totally, totally.
And the only thing I thought you got wrong was that he was disassociating. Cause I don't feel like at the very end of the song, he starts talking about how he's got to um, get forgiveness for the, the other half of him so that he can incorporate them into one person. But it's not a disassociative behavior is to try to ask seek for forgiveness. Seeking for forgiveness means that you have to know that you're, you're actually doing something wrong. So. Mm. Me and my doppelganger both share the same blood. One I have hated, the other I have loved. One of them's the golden boy, the man I'd like to be. I show him off in the parades for all the world to see. The other is much weaker. He stumbles all the time. The source of my embarrassment, he's the one I try to hide. The golden boy is made of straw. His finest suit will surely burn. His vice is the virtue that he never had to earn. The prodigal's been broken and emptied at the wishing well, but he's stronger for the breaking with a story to tell. I'm not easy with confessions. It's hard to tell the truth, but I have favored the golden boy while the other I've abused. Yeah, so that that resembles my life as well because I played two different people for uh, like over eight years, right? I was one person around my family and I was completely different around all my friends. And you definitely feel like a trophy boy and the the golden boy where he's just, you know, made out of straw. And so nothing really lands. So if you get in a compliment for something you're pretending to do, you know, it doesn't really, you know, impact you. And then when you finally got lit on fire, I can't remember how he exactly said it, but you become a whole new person and you're definitely better after the breaking um, because then you can become one person again. Do you want me to read the rest of it now? Sure. And he takes it like a man, though he's longing like a child to be loved and forgiven and share the burden for a while. So take a good look in the mirror. Tell me who you see, the one who Jesus died for or the one you'd rather be. Can you find it in your heart to show mercy to the one the father loved so much that he gave his only son? Yeah. So then that's him seeking forgiveness. And you're like, would you be the person who's fake and who everybody idolizes or would you be the somebody with a story and something to live for and somebody who's been forgiven? And yeah, that really hit me as well. Cause I was like, I was forgiven and you know, it touched my life so much um, that I became a whole new person and you know, the show off boy kind of disappeared and kind of got integrated into who I really was. Um, and it didn't feel like two different sides of me anymore. Right. Okay. I can see, cause I can see where we were seeing it differently. Cause I was thinking that the prodigal is the one that died and got integrated into being the golden boy, but you're saying, no, the golden boy is the one that dies and you get integrated into who you really are. Cause that's just a facade. Right. Right. Cause the golden boy is somebody you want that the entire society wants you to be and so you put on that front because you don't really no one wants to be their sinful nature and so no one really puts on a front to be the sinful nature and and the golden boy he says is made out of straw as in it's not a real person right and that when he gets lit on fire and he finally dies um he can then seek forgiveness for all of the sins for the other half of him and so that's what the other line was about, was about him finally seeking forgiveness and asking and, you know, coming out and be like, this is who I thought I was. And this is who everybody thought I was. And this is who I really am. And then once he starts seeking forgiveness for who he, who he was actually being when everybody wasn't around, then he can take the golden boy and he can incorporate him into who he thought he was actually. And they can, it's kind of like a merging of the two. It's not like one dies and one doesn't. They both kind of combine because he can be the golden boy around his friends and he can be the other guy and seek forgiveness and then work on them both being like, okay, the guy who's supposed to be all that, you can finally see his flaws. And so he becomes a real person and not just some trophy boy. And the guy who's got all the flaws becomes somebody with actual moral values. So he's not such a, a wreck. That makes a lot of sense because 
um, people in the public eye, um, politicians or religious leaders are always getting in trouble because who they're presenting themselves to the world as isn't, it becomes apparent that that's a facade and that they're doing other dark things in the secret, in the shadows. And then it's like, oh, they're a hypocrite and it ruins their whole career and it can be really bad. And I think uh, Jason Gray could really relate to that as a Christian artist, you know, it's like, I don't want to be presenting a facade to the world. I want to be actually genuinely who I am presenting a genuinely transformed person that Jesus died for to everybody so that he's presenting who he really is, which is something that he can live up to. Cause if you're presenting a facade, you can't always live up to that. At some point you might get, you'll get find out, even if it's after you die, you know, at some point they'll be like, Oh, look at the dark stuff he was into. Not only that, but when you're presenting a facade, you can't seek forgiveness because that would mean you have to admit that you failed at something. Mm, and that really, yeah. and you can't seek forgiveness unless you've gotten caught, but if you get caught, it's harder to seek forgiveness than to come out and be clean. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can really see why this was really important. I'm not very good at reacting. I don't catch what's going on in songs on a first listen. It usually takes looking at the lyrics and hearing it a few times to really like catch what a song is saying. <laughs> yeah. Unless it like touches you in your heart and you're like, this is my song. You know, you're like, you know, it took me like two listens to do it. But the first listen, I kind of, I knew exactly what he was talking about. I was like, that's my life. I lived that to a T. I lived two different lives. I killed one and integrated my second life into it. I let everybody learn who I really was. And then I was able, once I was able to learn, everybody knew who I was, was able to seek forgiveness for who I was. And then I was able to evolve into a new and better person that not, not because, uh, and because I did this, I could now seek forgiveness for the small things and for the things I did even though it was still hard to seek forgiveness, I could still do it with, you know, the confidence that I, you know, that I wouldn't be shut down and, and thrown out. So. Yeah. And that way you can really truly feel loved because when you, like you said earlier, when you're getting a compliment or you're get, receiving love or these things, it's coming to who you actually are and not a painted facade that you've been presenting. Yeah, totally. Would you like to share publicly this, transformation you went through or, or what exactly you're talking about with more details yeah I was thinking about that um so I got deep into pornography when I was 11 and I created a different persona I started doing one thing at school um, with all my friends which actually it wasn't really with my friends at first or never really um and then I started showing off the golden boy to my family and it got pretty bad. And I went on for about eight years and I got to a point where, um, to a point where I was doing some pretty bad stuff with other kids. Um, and I felt so bad about it that I actually, um, switched into doing gay pornography. Um, and at that point it really ruined my life because I destroyed my sex drive. Um, and then it took me till I came clean to my family, which was approximately nine or eight years after I had started, um, in which I had destroyed my character and I was always mad and I was always angry. Um, and I never accepted like any compliments or love because I never felt like anybody truly knew me, knew me. I didn't have any friends at the time either because I couldn't, I was showing them the facade as well because I didn't want anybody to know. So I didn't have any friends. Um, and it took me a, quite a while with living with my sister, Macario, before she wore down through all my shields um, to get me to, you know, introduce who I thought I really was. And when she like told me, oh, this is, this is who you are. It's, she didn't say it wasn't who you are. She just said some of the things that you do on here, you really hate about yourself. And now that, you know, you can seek forgiveness, we can figure out how to fix your flaws. And we worked through that. Um, it's been around two and a half years later. I haven't done any pornography since, and I consider myself straight, um, which is something that the entire world right now is struggling with. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Now that I'm no longer presenting a facade, when somebody gives me a hug, I'm not like thinking about what it would have been if they knew the other side of me or, you know, I really destroyed 
what I thought I was presenting. Aw, thank you so much for sharing that. I'm sure that it's not the easiest thing to talk about. Uh, no, it's, it's gotten easier. I've said it to so many people, you know, I, it, at the very beginning, it felt like, you know, cause I presented it to just my family and, um, it felt like, oh, now that my friends, it's like, I was like, I told my family and even though I'm going through it, it started off really hard for me to tell the truth to anyone or anyone else, but it gotten to a certain point now that if you really wanted to know my life story, I wouldn't hesitate telling it to you. Um, because my testimony comes with, uh, you know, my testimony comes with a price that I had to pay, which wasn't much. Right. And I can tell you, Hey, this is how it went down for me. And I can say, if you want to do the same thing, tell your family, though, some families will, will go after you and tell you that you're, you know, terrible person, but others will, you know, accept you for who you think you might be and, and work on it with you. And it, Everybody can evolve to be a better person if they allow themselves to be helped. It's really hard to become a better person by yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, being willing to tell the truth about what you're struggling with and about who you are is probably a really good first step in being able to uh, have Jesus change who you are, basically. Yeah, totally. And it says right in this. It says right in the song there that it was really hard for him to tell people who he really was after he demolished his golden boy. But as time goes on, it, it becomes a lot easier. Yeah. So. Once it's, once it's past, once it's old news. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. to change who you really think you are is truly really fantastic. You know? Yeah. Um, so do you have, do you struggle now at all? Or what did you get to such a dark place that you're so happy to be free that it's like so easy to stay, you know, in the freedom you have now? <laughs> well, um, a little bit of both. Every once in a while, something will come up and I, I'll, I'll have some struggles come back. But it's it, to a certain point of time that, you know, it's mostly, you know, in the past. Um, yeah. But every once in a while, things will come up and remind me or yeah, remind me of something I for, had forgotten. And I'll have to work through that as well. So. so how did this song come up? This song is not new. It's been out for years. Um, how did how long have you been listening to it? How did you find it? What what's going on with that? Mom sent it to me about a week ago and said, mm. you should listen to this. So. Yeah, that's how I got into it is the same way you got into it. So Yeah. Mom said, listen to this. I don't know how she found it. It's I don't um know. I don't know if I've heard her listen to any of his other music. Have you listened to any of his other music or tried any of it? No, I haven't. No. I just listened to the one video that mom sent me. Yeah. Time, so me either. I did look him up. He d- has released an album recently, so he's still releasing music i just i haven't listened to any of it yeah but this song's really good and so you also talked about that finishing 30 seconds of um of music there at the end yeah and it it's not something that's you know normally a part of a song but he just dropped like a whole lot of heavy stuff being like hey this is how you fix your life if you're living this right if you want to fix yourself living a two a two-sided coin you don't want to do that anymore. This is how you do it. And so that extra 30 seconds of just humming really is impactful for some people because um, everything's on autoplay now that just switches to the next song. So you really get that next 30 seconds of not having to listen to the song and just hearing the chorus being like, okay, yeah, if you want to fix yourself, tell people who you really think you are. Tell the truth. Yeah. Or so that, that that's what I thought the last 30 seconds was really really cool and I thought it was a really good idea to put it on there not something I would listen to all the time um if I had it on like constant repeat I'd probably you know or in a uh, series uh album I'd take it out but you know just the random one-time play it makes a great finish to that song uh yeah I'm not I'm not used to that I was like 
I, I already felt like it should be done. And then it just kept going. And then I was like, oh, it's four minutes long. And then it uh, wasn't, there wasn't anything left. <laughs> so yeah, that's, yep. that's all I noticed. And I, I, I got distracted and that was my first time listening. And I got distracted halfway through with um, kids and the dog and everything else. So I was, I kind of like missed what it was even about and kind of missed the impact of a lot of the lyrics. And then I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. Seems like a nice song. <laughs> I, totally. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really cool to hear it from your perspective. I totally, totally get that. Yep. All right. Well, all right. Thanks. Any so other much. questions? Um, no, I, I can't think of any, I think that's good. I think that wraps it up. We've been talking about it for, I don't know, 20 minutes now awesome all right right. um i love you so much gideon thanks for doing this love you too all right bye bye